Now, Father Abraham had many sons and many sons had Father Abraham. <laughs> Sorry. But I, I don't know about you, but to everyone here, he is sort of like Abraham to us. And I'm very honoured today to introduce him, to bring the word of the Lord. Amen. Why don't you give him a clap as he comes up? Well, good morning. Happy Father's Day. For those online, the Lord bless you. It's Father's Day here in Australia, if you're watching from overseas. So uh, we've, uh, we've just been enjoying the, the Word of the Lord on, uh, on Saturday mornings. Uh, yesterday went for about two hours. Then after the, the two hours, it went for another 20 or so minutes because people have so many questions about the Word of the Lord. We were talking yesterday, today about biblical tithing. Uh, that was, that's in the book of Deuteronomy and chapter 26 and so we explored that and, and uh, you can go and listen to these messages after the event. You can go, go to the Kingdom uh, website or the Good News for Israel website and you can uh, view those wonderful sessions afterwards and build your biblical literacy. It's like uh, Tash was saying, you know, for many years you may have gone and, and gone to church and got a three-point sermon which is which is wonderful motivating and exciting and Jesus loving but isn't it great to get into the word and understand the word uh, and get the heart of the father because that's how he reveals himself to us so um, this message is not specifically for fathers but let's just uh, turn this around a little bit and say that the word of God is a gift from God the father to you and me and Today, you know, it, it says if we're obedient to the Word, it brings glory to God, our Father. So obedience to the Word of God is like a Father's Day present to our Heavenly Father. So to obey it, we've got to know it and understand it. So today, we're going to be looking in the book of Deuteronomy chapter 28. It's a, it's a, a book. If you've got your Bibles, I'd like you to hold them up and just wave them around your uh, your devices, whatever you've got there where your Bible is, we want to read from the scriptures today. So start turning to Deuteronomy in chapter 28. You'll find Deuteronomy 28 fairly easily if you go first to Deuteronomy 27 and then move forward one chapter. That's the way I usually do it. Or you can do it the other way, you can go to 29 and go backwards. But whatever way, that's I find the easiest way to find it. You've been getting it wrong all your life, Andrew. There you go. Just simple things in life help, don't they? <laughs> anyway, so the background of this message, and I'm getting, this message is uh, really, there's a lot of practical testimonies in my message today because we all live in a real world with real families and real jobs and real homes and a real city and a real situation at the moment in our nation and we, as believers in Jesus, need to know how to uh, progress in our life successfully. And God tells us. It's not a mystery. It's in his Bible. It's in the word. We can go there and we can discover uh, that when we obey his word, it really does work. God does bless his people if they obey his word. So the background of this is Moses and the children of Israel are standing in the Arabah. It's north of the Dead Sea. For those who have ever been to Israel, it's on the Jordan side of the Jordan River. And they're looking into the land of Israel. They've been traveling from Egypt through the wilderness and now they're almost at the point of crossing over the Jordan River and entering into the Promised Land. Can you picture that? And there's millions of them. And they're standing and camping on this sort of deserty looking plain uh, just north of the, the Dead Sea and looking in. The thing that they're probably looking at is the city of Jericho. It's not far inland from the, the Jordan River. And Moses is giving these commands because he's been told by God that he is not going in with the children of Israel. We learned that he pleaded with God 
please let me go in, even for a couple of years, let me go in. I won't even lead them in there. Just let me just go in and see it. And God said, stop it, get away from me. I've told you, you're not going in. And so Moses is giving, as a father leader would give to the children of Israel those final commands as to what to do when they got in to the land. And as we have learned through the book of Deuteronomy, it's a sum up of the Torah and the journeys that they the the Torah they received at Mount Sinai, all the background, the festivals, the Shabbat, all the laws and and the journeys, and they've got to this place now. It's 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 sort of written out in the form of an ancient treaty, if you like, and uh, they're about to go in. And he says that once you get into the land, what you must do is you must go up to a certain place. It's two mountains together. They're sort of like twin mountains. In between them is a town called Shechem. The southern mountains called Mount Gerizim. The northern mountains called Mount Ival. And you're to go to these mountains, find your way up to those mountains. Uh, that was a significant place because that's where Abraham had first, when he came into the land of Canaan, had stopped. And God revealed to him that he wanted this land to be the land of Abraham and his descendants. And then when they got there to that uh, place at Mount Gerizim and Mount Ebal, then they were to separate six tribes onto Mount Gerizim, six tribes onto Mount Ebal. They were to whitewash some stones and write commandments on them. And then they were to declare the blessings from Mount Gerizim and the cursings from Mount Ebal. What were they blessings for? that will come from that for those that disobey the commandments here is the cursing that is associated with that not just individually but for the nation and it was centered mainly around if you decide that you don't want me anymore and you want a foreign god which is a demon then you can expect a kickback from that god and i'm giving you fair warning in advance what that will be like and so that's the, the background to this. And so we're heading into this book with this, this background. But let me also say this is like a shadow, a foreglimpse or a foretaste of Messiah, Jesus, and the kingdom of God. Okay, and we're going to look at that in a little bit more depth as I speak. And it's going to be a simple message today. But we're going to read from that. But bear that in mind in your own life. Yes, this is for the children of Israel on the day when Moses spoke this thing into being. But it's reference, it's shadow. If you, It's a shadow of you and me and the world that believes on the Lord Jesus, Jew and Gentile, as we approach the coming of the kingdom of God. That is the return of Jesus and his kingdom. So just have that in your mind as well as we study the word of the Lord. So open up your Bibles at Deuteronomy chapter 28. It's one of my, you know, I, I, this, my Bible just sort of opens up there. And it's sad to say it looks like it's got blood, sweat and tears on this page. I don't know. It's just all soft and, you know, it's well used. This page is a well read page in my Bible. And let's begin reading there from the scripture. Now it shall come to pass, if you diligently obey the voice of the Lord your God, to observe carefully all the commandments which I command you today, that the Lord your God will set you high above all the nations of the earth. So this message I have called it, you, if you will, then I will. If you will, then I will. Say that with me. If you will, then I will. Let's do it again. If you will, then I will. Because you're going to see this throughout the entire book. If you will do this, then I will do this. Okay, so let's, uh, let's have a look at this. He said, if you will carefully observe all the commandments, so it's if you will do that, which I command you today, then I, the Lord, will set you high above all the nations of the earth. If you'll obey me, my commandments, then I will set you above all the nations of the earth. And he's talking to the nation of Israel. Now, 
I want to, this is a question, even asked this very morning, uh, someone came and just out of the desire to know the answer to this, is the, the, are the commandments still applicable for us today? Are they still applicable or have they been done away with forever? Well, let's read in Matthew chapter 5 and verse 17. Let's, let's square this away because it's a, it's a common message. But let's square this away from the New Testament, from the words of Jesus. That, is that a fair thing? Let's draw and see what Jesus says. Let him be the arbitrator on this decision. Has the law been done away with all the commandments? Because we've got to get this straight before we go on to the rest of the verses. Matthew chapter 5, verse 17. You make up your mind from these verses. Do not think that I came to abolish the law or the prophets. I did not come to destroy, but to fulfill. Now, by fulfill, what does that mean? Well, it's a Greek word that actually means to live, obey, and establish, rather than complete. Okay, so it's not to finish it, it's to observe it, and to teach others to observe it, and be an example to those who are watching me, and essentially establish it. So what is he saying? I have not come to do away with the law or the prophets. I didn't come to do that, but to fulfill, to establish it. For assuredly, I say to you, till heaven and earth pass away, one jot or one tittle will by no means pass from the law till it is all fulfilled. Not one jot, not a yod or a vav. The two Hebrew letters that they're referring to there are just the smallest little letters. Whoever therefore breaks one of the least of these commandments, the least of these commandments, and teaches men so, shall be called least in the kingdom of heaven. But whoever does and teaches the commandments, he shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven. Now what do you think? You, I'll leave that decision to you as to what Jesus thought about the law being abolished or done away with which can sometimes be taught. You might have heard that. I have certainly heard that for many years. But is that what Jesus is saying? My opinion is Jesus is not saying. In fact, he's saying if you break one of these littlest, the smallest commandment, then you'll be the least in the kingdom of heaven. And if you'll obey it and teach others to obey, then you'll be the greatest. Well, you know what? I want to be the greatest. So I'm going to teach them. And that's what we're doing here today. We're going to be teaching them. And then it says in verse 2, And all of these blessings shall come upon you and overtake you because you obey the voice of the Lord. If you will, then I will. If you will observe these commandments, now how would you like this to be said of you? That these blessings will come upon you, but not only are the blessings going to come upon you, but they're going to overtake you. Like if you're running in a race and someone overtakes you, that's gone past what you're expecting you know you know you're you and you're running the race but if someone overtakes you that they've gone faster and beyond you and that's exactly what the scripture is saying here because you obey the voice of the lord and so these blessings are not just a result of doing good things because i've heard people say that well you know that guy's business is prospering because he's using biblical principles no that's not why what God is saying here. God is saying that if you call yourself by the name of the Lord and observe Him and His commandments, there is life in that. And the life of God is blessing in itself. If you observe God as the King, and his word as the constitution of the kingdom. If you will obey my instructions, says the Lord, then you will have me. You see that? You will have me. That is the greatest blessing. Abraham, God spoke to Abraham and said, I am your exceeding great reward, Abraham. You might seek for other things, but when you get it in your little brain, that I am your exceeding great reward. Yes. That when you've got me, you've got everything else. Yes. If you're aiming for something like Jesus said, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, the pagans or the Gentiles run after things to try and get them. 
But Jesus said, not you. You seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all of those things will be added to you. Why? Because when you seek God first and get God, you've got everything. Everything else is attached to the Lord. The blessing of God. If you do that, you'll be showing me, says the Lord, that you want me. That you want my kingdom. And you want my presence. And if you obey me, I will know that. And where I am, that's just the start of blessing. Trees grow literally and flourish. If you've ever seen the greening of the deserts in Israel, it's phenomenal. Pomegranates, my pomegranate at the moment pops out little pomegranates. If you see trees in Israel, it's like lines of thousands of big pomegranates. But that's what God's saying. If you choose me, you'll get me. And if I'm there, even the minerals in the soil will lean towards me. Even the trees will lean forward and say, here we are, Lord. It says all creation groans for the revelation or the revealing of the sons of God who believe that God is their king. And when they do that in a community, God is there and all creation leans in because creation was created by the creator to worship the creator. So everything flourish the sky is bluer the dew comes and the water waters the fields the rain will come in season everything will just work like the old honda ad where everything clicked over at the right time the ball rolled and fell down and went through a thing and blunk and then the car rolls forward you know isn't that lovely when everything just works yes. well when god is king everything works Evil things will lean away from God when His presence is there, when He's there. The rivers and the lakes will seem cleaner. The oceans will have fish that will find their way miraculously to your net. Your kids will be kinder. The birds will chirp, la di da 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 They'll sing to you. The birds will sing more. The hills will be alive with the sound of music. Children will run along the roadside dressed in material clothes made out of curtains and sing doe a deer, a female deer. It's just like that. The kingdom of God is alive. It's fresh. It's clean. If you'll obey me, if you will obey me, then I will come to you. And that in itself is a blessing. However, if you prefer to have another type of God... Remembering there are no other gods, but if you prefer to choose to believe there's another God and you build and set up an idol or some kind of thing in your home, even secretly, and you in your heart bow down to that thing or say prayers to that thing or take, touch it or kiss it or lucky charms or things like that, if you prefer that, that is called an idol. And there's not really a God behind that, but there is something behind that, and it's called a demon. And if you bow down to that, then you're bowing down to a lot less than God. You're bowing down to a demon. And if you ignore me and do that, then you are invoking those spirits upon you, the ones that bring fear and control and darkness and scarcity. You might feel like you're one of the crowd as you get free and sleep around or do whatever you do. Or as you murder a child, an unborn, feeling like you're part of the majority. Or change the marriage laws away from what I've commanded you, which is my constitution. You can do all that. But you must realize You've changed kingdoms. Because my commands, if you obey them, bring me. But if you don't obey them, they don't bring me. They bring what you're praying for. And you can choose to call what I call good, bad. And you can choose to call what I call bad, good. 
But that's just simply not my kingdom. It's something, it's a kingdom, but it's not a kingdom of light and a kingdom of God. And it's far, far short of what the Lord says I have for you. And so God makes these promises now, and the basis of of this is, if you will observe what I have said, that's it, then these things shall happen to you. I'm not going today on to the second part of this chapter, which talks about what will happen if you don't do these things. Carl really did that well yesterday. He was in the mood yesterday to tackle the back end of Deuteronomy chapter 28, uh, which were the curses. But I'm not going to do that today. I want to talk to you about the blessing of the kingdom of God on your life if you observe these things. And I'm going to give you practical examples of how, you know, our family as a very ordinary family, very average people have tried our best to observe the kingdom of God and try the, the word of God and the kingdom of God and sought that as best we could. So let's have a look at that as he starts in verse 3 to outline the blessings. Blessed shall you be in the city and blessed shall you be in the country. There's one of those, if you will, then I will. This is what I will do. If you obey my commands, then you'll be blessed in the city and blessed in the country. Well, that, that's a sort of code for everywhere. Have you noticed that? If you're in the city or the country, it's like those Japanese ferry lights. It's, it says on the instructions, it says, for inside and outside use only. <laughs> Make sure you don't use them anywhere else but inside or outside. If you are going to the moon to moonwalk, then you should not use these ferry lights. But if you are in or out of your house, you can use these fairy lights. Well, this is like that. In the city, you'll be blessed. And in the country, you'll be blessed. It applies to wherever you are. And I have to, as a child of God, appropriate blessings like this to my life if I am in obedience to the Word of God. Many people say, I don't understand why I'm experiencing this, 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 and this. Well, are you obeying the Word of the Lord? If Jesus hasn't done away with it, are you observing it? And so we have a look at that. So I, I want to, you know, Jesus said uh, to his disciples, I want you to go into every village. Now that's everywhere, isn't it? Like go into every village to declare the gospel. And he said, when you do, you'll be backed by signs and wonders. So, of course, I'm a fairly naive person. If it's in the Bible, I like to try it out. Are you like that? I like to see, I'd like to think that if it, the God said it, then I can have a shot at it. And so, you know, even, to, even you know, when Kyle and I, we, we, we're in a business and we go into a person's home. Every week we're in people's homes or commercial properties. And uh, if, if we see there's an opportunity, um, then we will shine as bright as we possibly can for the Lord. You know, not every household this opportunity comes up, but we pray that opportunities will come up every week, every, every uh, week when we go into homes. I've found him, you know, I, I usually do the outside, he does the inside when we go into this. It gives us wonderful opportunities to come into people's homes and they actually pay us for it. It's wonderful. And then we get to minister. So uh, it's a perfect business. So I'm usually doing the outside. Kyle's the more chattery of the two of us. And so he's inside and he's usually with the customer. And uh, I'll come in and like one time there's an atheist there who's lost his job because he's fallen uh, off a ladder or a truck or something and he's hurt his feet and he can't get his work. And so Kyle's there on the floor (laughs) praying for the guy's feet, you know, the atheist, of course, who's weeping, you know, like or very moved by the fact that this man, the the man he's called in to destroy all the pests in the kitchen, is uh, now on on his knees praying for his feet. Well, this happens nearly every single week. Every every week we look for these opportunities. Why? Because everywhere you are and everywhere, inside your house, outside your house, you are a light and a blessing to wherever you go. You should think about that as you, you know, as someone in the store, you know, rubs you up the wrong way. Be the light. Be a light. I walked... Uh, up to a lady one time, the Lord said, go for a walk on the beach. This is in Western Australia. And I walked along and in the distance I saw a light a long way away actually. And I kept walking and I kept walking, kept walking, got to this pier. 
And as I walked out on the pier, there's a lady fishing on the pier, an old lady, a few others at the end of the pier. And I walked up to the lady and I felt, oh, well, the Lord's got me here. So I walked up and stood right beside her. Still dark, the light of the pier, twinkling on the water. And she's fishing. And I said, have you caught anything? And she said, no, I haven't caught anything. I said, do you read your Bible? She said, wow. She said, well, I have a Bible, but I haven't read it for very many years. I said, well, you need to go home after I've talked to you, dust it off and begin to read it and God will bless you. And she's like, okay, like, where did you come from? It's like, I just appeared out of the darkness, you know. And then she's winding her line in and it comes out of the water. If this is the water, her line comes out of the water this far and a fish, I saw it come out, up out of the water and jump up. And she can't really say she caught it. It committed suicide (laughs) on her hook. It shocked the life out of her. She said, oh my goodness, this has never happened before. She said, I've got something to take home to eat and feed my cat. I said, just you remember, (laughs) you go home and read your Bible. I will go home and read my Bible. And then she said, could you stay here so that I can catch some more fish? (laughs) See, wherever you go, you will be a blessing if you're open to the moving of the Lord. That is the promise that God gives us there. Everywhere. Verse 4. Blessed shall be the fruit of your body, the produce of your ground, and the increase of your herds, the increase of your cattle, the offspring of your flocks. You know, the main thing that I get out of that, I mean, apart from business and and the, the work of our hands, I see that our children are blessed. You see that? The fruit of your womb. That's an idiom for children. Now, well, the world is not perfect, and I know people here have different stories about their own children. But I want to say that when I started to read this, and God challenged me on this, I, Kyle was born, David wasn't born, we didn't have Katie And I want to bear this out because I used to pray daily for my children. Now, Kyle was a baby, but I was praying for his life and for his wife and for their children. Now, I say that because Kyle now has a wife and he has children. And my beautiful wife, God gave me a beautiful wife. And we have served the Lord together. And we've served in the name of Jesus, all over the world. But God honoured that prayer and gave us the most beautiful children, leaders. We prayed for this though. We prayed, Lord, you have said in your word, blessed is the fruit of my womb. Leaders. You know, my Kyle and the wives, my beautiful, I don't call Tash my daughter-in-law, she's my daughter. She's my daughter. And my 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 magnificent grandsons well guess who's already praying for them and their spouses and their children i'm praying for my great grandchildren to be born and you can do this too my my and kyle you know kyle runs a business he's got a church you know he's a wonderful leader he's in the spirit he's in the word of pardon me in the word of god this is the blessing you want on your kids isn't it not if you're in agreement you know, this is what you want for your children and your spiritual children. Fathers, you need to pray for your kids, even if they're rebellious. Now, my, my second son, he's 28. He has his own engineering company. This is what the Lord said. He's got a beautiful lady he's about to marry and uh, he's got a, a little one on the way. You know, not everything's perfect, but he, when he moves to the Gold Coast, he said, Dad, I want to come and bring the family to this church said, hallelujah, you're welcome. We will welcome you in. And my little daughter, Katie, adopted from Mozambique, I can tell you some stories. She's the most beautiful, vital girl you could ever imagine. And she's had her struggles. But the Lord has a word of God on her life, and she will fulfill it. And she'll be a, something to tangle with. The devil will have to get out of her way. And uh, she's going to touch many, many people for the Lord. So you see, you can trust, the word, even if it, at this very moment it doesn't seem like it's all coming together, you trust God and remind Him of His covenant. Yes. Okay, remind Him that He said that your children will be blessed. And so uh, you can do that. Let's, let's move on to verse 5. Blessed shall be 
your basket and your kneading bowl. Again, if you will obey my commands, then I will do this. I'll bless your basket and your kneading bowl. Now, this is obviously in a context of the, the time and when the, the Israelites were about to cross over into the land. Uh, it's speaking of food and their, their kneading bowls, what they're kneading up their bread and their fruit baskets, etc. But it speaks of God's provision. And if you're a business person, you can literally take this scripture to the bank. I've seen so many testimonies, I, I'm not going to uh, go into all of them, but let me just tell you that when Jesus needed uh, f- some food to feed the 5,000, he didn't at that point, probably the disciples didn't know that they were going to feed the 5,000. They came up with a, a very wise plan to send the people down into the local villages. But Jesus said, no, you feed them. What have we got? And they find a little guy with five loaves and two fish, and they said, that'll do, that's all we need. What I always talk with my brother and my good friend Al, what if he'd only had three loaves and one fish? Would he have only sort of done three-fifths of the crowd that day? Like sort of 3,000 would have been fair, the other 2,000 would have had to go on and buy their food somewhere else? Or was it the fact that the little boy gave everything? And the little boy gives everything, and did it matter there were 5,000, 10,000, 25,000, 100,000? It doesn't matter. Jesus pulled back the curtain of the kingdom, And that food turned into enough food for everybody to eat with leftover. And if you know that this is based, these are messianic kingdom prophecies and blessings. These are what will be in the kingdom of God when Jesus comes back. When you realize that, you can say, Lord, I want a foretaste of that in my business. I need to to be reflective of the kingdom of God in my business. I need it to reach and touch people. But sometimes that starts with you being prepared to yield it to God. Oftentimes we yield a little bit to God. But if your business belongs to God, if it's His business, really, truly, not just, oh, I say that because that's a nice thing to say. But if your business belongs to God, like the little boy, how much did he... We don't read that he snuck a piece of bread around the corner and half a fish and had a little bit before he offered We understand he gave the lot. But if your business or your job, your promotion that's coming up, you can believe God that if you yield it to the Lord, you shall be blessed. That's what the scripture says. Is that right? It's what the scripture says. I remember, um, and I'm telling lots of stories just so that we can uh, just get a picture of this. I was preaching in a conference in Mozambique and I was preaching on this very subject. The young man who was one of my leaders came up, very poor country in Mozambique, and uh, he said, Pastor Greg, I've got no food at home. I said, what have we just been learning? He said, uh, I'm going to trust the Lord. He was the eldest son, mother was sick, he had brothers and sisters. He walked home, 12 kilometres, he walked home, and on the way the little brother was with him and said, what are we going to eat when we get home? And he said, well, we just heard the message, we're going to trust the Lord. But we haven't got we've, got, we've got the smallest little tiny bit of flour. There's not going to be enough for the food. And the, all the way home, he'd say, well, we, we're going to trust God. And the, the brother would say, but we haven't got enough. And well, tr- we'll trust the Lord, but we don't have enough. Well, we'll trust the Lord, but we don't have enough, you know. They got home and the little brother said, see, we haven't got enough even for one person. And Venetia said, put the pot on and the water on. And the little kid says, are you kidding? We haven't got enough. Just put it on. Let's put God to the test on his scripture. And so Venezu, the, the brother puts the pot on, the mother's looking pretty emaciated and skinny. What are we going to have? It's all right, God's going to sort this out. They put in this little touch of flour into the bowl and before their eyes, this bowl of pottage flowed out and overflowed and fed all of them and there was leftover for others. Hallelujah, praise the Lord. How does it happen? Who knows how it happens except God's presence is there protecting his word. And you can believe this or you can say, no, come on, be real. Be realistic. Well, how can you be realistic when a little bit of flour flows into food for feeding a family of 12? That's not realistic. That's miraculous. And we have to step into the miraculous, friend. And, and get used to walking in faith. 
See, there is a disease apart from COVID, and it's called fear. And fear is a disease that opposes faith. We've got to be careful. We live by faith, not in what we see. Someone has to stand against this disease. We've got to be wise in how we walk, but we cannot submit to fear. We must walk in accordance to the Scripture. So verse 6, Blessed shall you be when you come in. Blessed shall you be when you go out. Well, Kyle explained this really well yesterday from the rabbis who said this has to do with your entry into the world and your exit out of the world. I always, up until that point, had believed it was when you come in and go out, which would have been a lot like a previous verse that says when you're in your home or when you're in the country, you know. But this one, the rabbis say, Rashi says, he says, may your departure from the world be as free of sin as was your entry into the world. And Kyle explained it yesterday as we've come from one room before we were born and we're heading to another room after we die and in between there's this hallway called life. And so from the time we come in to our going out, let you be blessed. That's what this scripture means. Isn't that a fantastic scripture? From the day you're born to the day you die, let the blessing of the Lord be upon you. Isn't that fantastic? And that's what the actual scripture means there. Um, and that has, friends, I, you know, they say build a trust bag of testimonies. We were preaching in a church in Tika, which is about 80 kilometers from Beira. And we, uh, we had just cast out some demons and we walked back to a car and blow me down. The car wouldn't start. We'd parked on the side of the highway and we walked in, done all this marvelous work for the Lord. So we thought, you know, walk back out and the car doesn't start. And me being a man lifts the hood. The woman in the group says, why don't we hail someone down? I said, that's like asking a guy to observe instructions, you know. Let, let's inst you got that new toy for the child from Ikea? Let's look at the instructions. The father says, excuse me, put the burn them. I will, I'll sort it out over here. Seven hours later, he's still trying to figure it all out. Isn't that the way guys are? But... Oh, thanks for that. Was that you, Sabani? Was that, your, was that you? Take note of that, Ramesh, that your wife said that. I was only joking, but anyway. So she says, she says um, why don't we hail someone? I said, no, I'm not, not hailing anybody. I, I can fix it. Nothing worked, you know. Cool, how could I fix it? I, Ramesh wasn't there. How could I fix it? He, no mechanic. And so... Anyway, finally I said, you know what, maybe you heard from the Lord. And I put out my thumb and a car comes down, the very next car. And he pulls in and he says, no, actually I didn't put my finger out. He saw us and he rolled past, he said, do you need a lift? And I said, that'd be great, that'd be great. And he pulls out a tow rope and he tows us back 80 kilometres. And he knew where our house was because, you know, the place was small. He was a missionary. Coming back from South Africa, and as we rolled past our house, the tow rope snapped <coughs> as we were outside our house, and I rolled around and into the driveway and came to a stop in the driveway. This was a miracle provision of God. It didn't snap five Ks ago. It snapped as we rolled into the driveway. So come on, be blessed whether you're in the country when you come into the world, when you go out of the country, trust in the Lord your God. The Lord will cause your enemies who rise against you to be defeated before your face. They shall come out against you one way and flee before you seven ways. Friend, are you with me today? You're very quiet today. Are you with me online? Are you shouting more than they are here? <laughs> this is a good message. Thanks, Pastor Kyle. Do this. Everybody just do this so I know that you're actually not asleep. That's sort of, that's, that's great. I saw that yawn. <laughs> I see that yawn. <laughs> I said do this, not yawn. <laughs> it's a sign. I better wrap up then. Jesus, remember, gave his disciples authority over every evil thing. Friend, I want to tell you, what I'm trying to say here today is we need to activate our faith. 
according to the word of the Lord. Jesus said uh, that I will give you authority over demons and over all the power of the enemy. Nothing shall by any means hurt you. He said to step on Satan, you know. Don't just take it lying down. Stand up on the inside and give it back. And look, look, it's a natural thing. Thank you. Thank you, Eddie. Good on you, man. We had a situation in the... In the in, and, and look, it can be anything that looks like this doesn't look like God. We had a cyclone come in in Mozambique in 2000. A very famous cyclone. A lady gave birth in a tree, all that sort of stuff. It was in the papers. And uh, this cyclone was coming in. And uh, we, my associate and I, my little Mozambican buddy, we went down to the Grand Hotel and we were worried because this thing was bending great I-beam poles like they were made of Play-Doh. And we said, this is not acceptable. And so we hopped in this car and drove against these, I think they measured 200 kilometers an hour or more winds at the airport. And we drive through this, you know, this deluge and we get out and he says, what do we do now? I said, we step out and we tell this thing, it's got to go back out to sea. He said, I've never done this before. I said, well, nor have I. Let's, let's do it. So we stood out there and we said, in the name of Jesus, you cyclone, get back out to sea. You know, and we spoke to it like it was a demon. Anyway, sure enough, this cyclone stopped. It backed out. And that you can see it on the, tr the root of the, of the barometric thing. It backed out to sea. It went north and made land 200 kilometers north. Now, unfortunately for them, it sort of destroyed that whole region. But our city was spared. And I want to encourage you. This has happened to me about eight or nine times. You can deal with these things in the name of Jesus. It happened once when we were at King's. We had a very bad cyclone or storm come over the city. It had made its way down from North Caloundra, making its way down. And got to the Gold Coast and all the churches were shutting on a Sunday night. And I gathered the worship team together and said, come on, let's, let's hit this thing head on. We're not stopping church for this. And so we stood on the platform and they came together. And we said to that storm, you get off the Gold Coast. Anyway, it we prayed for a few minutes and that's the job done. We've done what we needed to do anyway. It still howled and rained and a few people didn't come. But the next morning I read the Gold Coast Bulletin and it said, we dodged a bullet. And that, that storm had come all the way down the coast and wiped out houses all the way down but jumped the Gold Coast. Literally jumped the Gold Coast and continued on Tweed Heads and continued its uh, its destruction all the this is 2012 so friends listen you you might feel like you're an average person but you're not an average person you might think i'm very shy but the lord has said to you that he's given you the holy spirit to embolden you and empower you to do what god has placed upon your heart if you will observe the commands of God, then I will be with you and these blessings shall be upon you. I'm going to finish it now and you can read the rest of those scriptures. There's so many applications in every area of your life. Mothers, fathers, business people, employees, children, students, whatever the area that you are in. If you observe the commandments, then I will do this, says the Lord. And you can take that to the bank. Even if at this moment you don't understand why it doesn't seem to be happening, you stand on this thing. Stand on the promise that the Lord has given here. And let's see this world, see God. We reflectors of our Lord Jesus and reflectors of our mighty God. So let's do that when, we, when we're uh, out and about and in our families. And fathers, for heaven's sake, teach your children the Word of God. Teach them, teach them, teach them the Bible. Let's just pray. Father, we praise you and thank you for your wonderful Word. It's power. It's meaning. To us, your instructions, O oh Lord, are like a light to our path, a beacon for our future. 
They are hope and they are life. And Father, most of all, we thank you for our Messiah, Jesus. As he hung on the cross with his, uh, his arms spread open, a testimony of your love, vulnerable, Lord, as he hung there. But Lord, we thank you that he died for our sins and rose again to come back and take his kingdom when he does. We thank you and praise you in the name of our Lord Jesus. Amen. Amen. Well, friend, today we're going to just, uh, I'm just going to give an opportunity just before Pastor Kyle comes. Let's just close our eyes again. If there's anybody here today in this congregation or on, on the online that you do not know the Lord your God, you do not know Jesus, you have never given your heart to the Lord, nor have you submitted to the Lord Jesus. And your sins have not yet been washed away, forgiven. Then today I invite you that you give your life to the Lord today. And today I would invite, as we just uh, keep our eyes closed, for people to respond in their hearts that if you don't know the Lord, that you will come forward today. You will come to the front. Don't wait until after your coffee or anything. Let's get your right, life right with the Lord this morning, this moment. That's what today has been for you. Then let's get it right this morning. And for those that need a, a boost in their conviction about the Lord of God and would like prayer, and in that prayer they're saying, I want to again trust in the living God. I want to reflect the power and might of our God in this world, <clears throat> in my own life and business and family. If that's you, you come too, just as we begin, as I pass it over to Kyle. You can open up your eyes right now and you can start moving as Pastor Kyle comes and I'll love to pray with you.